Hi, Chelsea. Hey. How's Hi, it Chelsea. going, Jake? It's going great. How are you? Good. Um, Good. Are you, how is Mr. Charlie this morning? He's making his way out, so I'm going to pivot to him now. This is Charlie, our prehensile-tailed porcupine, with his trainer, Johnny. Hi, Charlie. He's having oh, a hard hi, time waking up. Hi, Johnny. Hi. <laughs> Here he comes. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Jake, and this is Take a Break with Jake and Charlie and Johnny today. She's here with us to help us wake Mr. Charlie up. Charlie is a prehensile-tailed porcupine. He is just about nine and a half years old now. He has his birthday in August. So he's full grown. He weighs about six kilograms, which is mm, about 12 or 13 pounds. And that's a good size for a porcupine of his species. We're gonna see if he'll come all the way out of his crate this morning. He, you know, is slow to wake up most days, but especially these days when there's less happening around the zoo, he's like, there's really no reason for me to get out of bed ever, right? Yep, I agree. <laughs> so prehensile-tailed porcupines are primarily nocturnal, so it is kind of a big ask for us to be asking him to wake up at midday, but we have some of his favorite treats. What Johnny just put down are pine nuts, which are really tasty, and he really loves those. And then you'll see her bring over ooh, a banana chip. He's like, no ooh. to the banana chip right no, now. <laughs> but he'll come out on his own here. Um, so Charlie has been an ambassador animal here at the zoo most of his life. He actually has a really large enclosure here at our new ambassador building that's about 10 feet tall. It has all kinds of branches and perching in there so you can climb around and do what porcupines do. For this species, they spend a good ch chunk of their lives up high in the, uh, in the trees looking around for all their favorite foods. And they love to eat different kinds of plants. They love to eat leaves. They love to eat bark. And they like to eat the cambium layer of trees, which is the like layer of wood right inside underneath the bark. Um, and right now he's not like nervous or scared or anything. He's just like not interested in the treats that Johnny's offering. And so he's saying, I'd rather be in the dark here, which is just fine. We never force our animals to do anything they don't want to do. So even though we could, you know, safely pick Charlie up and bring him out here, nobody likes being forced to do things they don't want to do, right? So we won't do that to him. We don't do that to any of our animals here at the zoo. So when he's ready, he'll come out. And if he doesn't want to come out, he'll just sit there and look real cute, right? Yep. Not, um, Jay, not a couple so questions came in on, um, you know, is he safe to pick up? And, like, how would you even do that with those clothes? Yes, so the safest way to pick him up, once we get him out, hopefully, maybe, um, we'll be able to see his tail. And prehensile tailed porcupines are named because they have a really long grasping tail that's really muscular and helps them hold onto trees like an extra limb. Um, so we can pick him up by that tail and then we put our other hand beneath his back feet there and that allows us to move him around. But largely Charlie moves around on his own. Um, Johnny, his primary trainer over here has been working with him a lot in the past couple years. Um, he'll target around on a table or in his house he participates in his own medical care a lot. So we've been training him um, to go into a different kind of crate where we can um, put gas in so that we can help him go to sleep. If we have to do a deep procedure on him, like one of his annual medical procedures, um, all of that is choice-based. So we never force him to do any of that. But if he wants to participate, then that's great for him and for us. And it's a lot less stress on him. So by and large, we don't really handle him, but we can if we have to. Awesome. Um, a good question came in too. Um, Jake, can you tell us where you are? And um, um, one person asked if they're able to see animals in the new building. Yeah, so I'm over here in our new Ambassador Animal Building. It's near the Croft Center, if you've been to the zoo before. And we are actually in the VIP room, which is where guests can come and meet some of our different ambassador animals on our backstage pass tours. Um, and you can find all that info out at nashvillezoo.org. Um, obviously, while the zoo is closed, we're unable to be doing those tours, but hopefully um, we'll all be 
healthy and safe and back up and running sometime in the somewhat near future. Um, and then y'all can Hopefully. check out, yeah, y'all can check out those tours. Charlie isn't one of the animals that we typically meet in the tours. Um, we have flamingos, we have an aardvark, and we have a sloth that people can normally come meet in the tours. Um, any other questions so far? Questions. Yeah. Um, how old can a porcupine live? Amanda's wondering that. So the oldest prehensile tailed porcupine that I know lived to be 26 years old in human care. Um, that's quite old. In the wild, they don't live nearly half that long. Um, they have to worry about predators. They have to wor worry about habitat loss and finding food and stuff like that. Um, so they can live quite a while in human care. For those of you just tuning in, Charlie is not scared or camera shy. He's just waking up. <laughs> yeah, he's just tired, which we can all kind of relate to. Nocturnal animals have a harder time adjusting to daytime. And similarly, daytime animals like me have a hard time adjusting to nighttime. A lot of questions, Jake, on whether porcupines bite and um, what are their teeth like? So anything with a mouth can bite, for sure, right? Um, yep. I typically don't bite people. I, I usually like to bite donuts. That's my favorite thing to bite. Um, Charlie doesn't eat donuts, but he does like to eat corn. We have some banana chips. That's one of his favorite things usually. We have all of his greens and his other veggies here um, to show people. So he eats a lot of different kinds of things. And right now, because Charlie is a rodent, he has really big front teeth that he uses to chomp down on his food like this. I'll give you an example of chomp, chomp, chomp. Um, right now, Charlie actually has a little bit of a tooth issue. In the wild, when porcupines have tooth issues, they actually can't survive too well. But fortunately, he's here at the zoo, so he's getting the best medical care. And so we have Johnny here who looks at his mouth every day to look at how his tooth is progressing. And then we have our vet staff who check him out regularly as well and help him along. Um, so his food is chopped up really tiny right now, but generally speaking, he gets kind of French fry sized pieces of sweet potato and carrot and apple, all these harder vegetables and fruits that help file down his teeth because he's a rodent. So his teeth are always growing. That is crazy. Um, okay, a couple more questions, Jake, on um, do porcupines shoot their quills? I know this is one of your favorite topics. Yeah, yeah. So all of his quills are modified hairs. So he uses those to protect himself out in the rainforest from predators like jaguars and ocelots and cougars, really whatever might bother him. He has those quills to protect him. And the quills can't be shot out of his body um, no more than I can shoot my hair out at people. Um, but what he does is he'll rattle them really loudly to scare off predators, and then he'll back up into a predator really quickly. And the ends of all of these quills, the exposed parts, are barbed, and that allows him to push all of those quills directly into the face of the predator, and the quill sticks in the predator's skin and comes out of Charlie's back. And that's a really great way to deter animals from trying to eat you. Awesome. A um, couple questions about Charlie. Can you talk about um, where Charlie came from? Um, yeah. All of that? So Charlie came from another zoo when he was weaned from his mother. Typically porcupines, well, porcupets are what the babies are called, are um, with their mother for up to a year before they're off on their own. Um, but Charlie came to us when he was a little under a year old and he came, I believe from a zoo in Florida, but I work with about 80 different animals. So it's hard for me to remember where everybody came from. Um, uh, yeah. But he was, um, so he did stay with his mom for about a year, you said? About, yeah. Okay. Um, one interesting question, which I've never thought about, Jake, about porcupines, is can he run far and fast? So typically, Charlie and other prehensile-tailed porcupines stay up in the trees, and so he can move pretty quickly when he's up in the trees. He's not so quick when he's on, like, the ground. Um, conversely, ground-dwelling porcupines, like the crested porcupines that we have here at the zoo, can certainly move quickly on the ground. 
Um, Jake, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is Charlie's nose. Yeah, yeah. So he has a giant nose, and he uses that to smell everything he can find in the rainforest. So they live down in Central and South America in the rainforest, and if you've been to the rainforest or seen a film on rainforest, you could hear all of the different birds and monkeys and everything screaming and chirping and squawking. And all those animals can be really, really noisy. And so instead of trying to compete with all those noises, what Charlie does instead is he commutes via, communicates via scent. And so he pees on things to say, this is mine. Um, and then he uses that giant nose to sniff everything. Awesome. And how boopable is it? The people want um, to know. Charlie doesn't really love strangers booping his nose, which I think we can all kind of relate to. Yep. Um, but when he knows you pretty well, you can um, give that big squishy nose a little boop, right? Yeah, go ahead, Johnny. Boop. There, a boop for everyone. And a dimple. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And Charlie is um, not in a mated pair. Um, I think I saw a question come through like that. He's the only tail tailed porcupine we have. Correct. We do, however, have a different species of porcupine, right, Jake? Yeah, so we have crested porcupines that live on exhibit here at the zoo. And Kelsey, I believe you posted some media of them last week. I did. And um, for those of you tuning in, heads up super cute video coming your way this afternoon of those baby porcupines playing. You do not want to miss it. Thank you. Oh, Charlie, he's like leaning out of the crate. And just a reminder or like new information if you're just joining us, Charlie is not afraid right now. He's just tired. So he's just like, I'm good, everyone. Thank you. And Johnny's being so kind to him and hand feeding him. So he's like, I'll just wait for her to bring the food back here. Um, he has not fathered any babies, no. Um, Jake, about the quills, do they yeah. fall out? Do they grow back in? What's that like? Is it like um, birds molting feathers or what happens? Um, yeah, so because those quills are all just modified hairs, they grow just like our hair. So when they come out randomly, like they'll just fall out just like our hair will sometimes just like a couple of things will fall out. Um, they'll grow back in. And if he does end up like rear-ending a predator, he can, you know, <laughs> some of those will pull out of his back and then he'll grow some back in. So yeah, they're, just think of all those quills. Those are all just modified hairs. It's nothing, nothing really fancy. It just is really helpful for him to stay protected. Oh my gosh, he's like almost a quarter of the way out of the tree. Way to go, way to go. Is it hard to wash them? I don't wash Charlie, no. <laughs> what Does other he bathe himself? Does he bathe himself? Not particularly, no. Charlie's like not a big fan of like water or being wet or being around water or being wet. So um, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't really bathe himself. And you can imagine like an animal like him who relies on scent to communicate, he wants to be stinky. So he doesn't want to smell like fresh and clean. He wants to smell like Charlie smells. Do you want me to go ahead and I can try to hold this here? Hi, Charlie. Do you want this biscuit? Yes. He said, yes, please. So he's finally out of the crate. Johnny's moving the crate back. We're going to get a good look at how cute Charlie is now that he's all the way out. Good job, Charlie. Good job. Can we get a close-up <laughs> of his little hands, please? Yeah. <laughs> that's not me, that's Charlie. Thank you for clarifying. <sighs> Let's talk about those hands, Jake. Are there um, claws or is it all finger? You can kind of see right here. Oh, look at that zoom. Ooh, that's as sharp job. as they are. They're not sharp whatsoever. Um, and we don't clip them at all either. Here are his back feet. That's kind of blurry, but that's what his back feet look like. Um, so they're not sharp at all, um, but he does use his little hands to hold onto branches while he's climbing. Um, several questions, Jake, about have you ever been quilled? And I think these folks may have missed our conversation earlier about that, but can you circle back to that? Yes, yeah, so porcupines can't shoot their quills. They're just modified hair, so they can't fling out of their body unless like he has a loose one and he just happens to shake. 
Um, I have been fooled, but not by Charlie. Charlie is a very sweet porcupine. He doesn't really do anything but sit here and chomp down on food. Um, let's see. Um, Chris, I think, is wanting to see the tail. So let's get that. So this is the prehensile tail. You see there are quills growing all the way along it. And then all of these here are just kind of like wiry hairs. They're not actually quills. And this is what he uses to hold onto the branches up high in the trees. Not a dumb question, um, whether or not they're in the raccoon family. They are not. Is that correct, Jake? Yeah, you're correct. So they're actually a rodent. So they're related to mice, rats, capybara. Um, you name a rodent and he's related to it. There are actually <laughs> quite a few species of porcupines that live in North So cute, Charlie. He's trying to target to Johnny over here. He's like, ah, oh, Johnny, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. Where does he rank size-wise with other porcupine species? So prehensile-tailed porcupines are kind of in the middle. You have some smaller species that live down in Central America that are kind of lesser known. And then you have um, the prehensile-tailed porcupines that usually weigh like four to six kilograms, which is like, I don't even remember, eight to 12 pounds about. And then um, the larger porcupines are like the crested porcupines that live in Africa and India. Um, and those can get quite a bit larger, like upwards of 25, 30 pounds. Amazing. <laughs> Jessica, um, Charlie is nine years old and he is full grown. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if we missed anybody else's questions. Um, would he ever hang from his tail, Jake, or does he just use it for balance? Um, so few animals that have a prehensile tail can actually hang from it. Um, too well, if you can imagine like you going on the monkey bars and holding your entire body weight up with just one hand is like not really a very easy feat. And it's not super easy for Charlie either. So he'll use that tail when he's climbing around um, and he'll hold onto branches with it while he's moving. But generally speaking, he's not going to hang from his tail. Okay. Um, Lexi, they do shed just like we do because those quills are modified hairs. Good question. Um, what is his favorite enrichment? Great question. So he loves things that smell. So we give him different kinds of perfumes and different kinds of spices that smell really tasty. And we'll hide those all around his large enclosure so that he moves around a lot and sniffs them all and he'll sometimes like rub his face on them or sometimes he'll get angry and he'll pee all over the smells to like <laughs> block them up. I saw one other question, Kelsey. Someone was asking, how do porcupines avoid poking each other? And that's like yeah. such a good question. I love answering that. So porcupines have to be very cautious when they're around one another. And typically they're pretty solitary, this species. They like to live kind of on their own. Um, but when the mothers give birth to their babies, the babies come out with really, really soft quills. They're kind of like, it takes up to like two or three days for them to dry up and harden completely. And that means that they're unprotected for up to three days. So they stay real close to mom and dad and make sure that they're protected by them. What um, are these guys' conservation status? Um... So most porcupine species are doing pretty well. Think about rodents and think about things like mice and rats. They're really um, great at adapting to a variety of situations and habitats. So Charlie and other prehensile-tailed porcupines are lower concern. Um, I don't think that they're listed as a least concern, but it's very possible that they might be. Um, fortunately, their numbers are doing okay in the wild. Things that you and I can do to help porcupines, a really easy thing is if you really like coffee, you can purchase coffee that's like bird friendly or shade grown. Because down in Central and South America, a lot of coffee is grown. And unfortunately for like kind of traditional coffee, like large scale production, they clear cut the rainforest to make the coffee plantations. Um, but there's some amazing local folks down in Central and South America who utilize the forest and keep the forest living and surviving around them. And it's 
really amazing because then they don't have to cut down the forest to make the coffee that we know and love. So make sure that when you're shopping for your next thing of coffee, look for shade grown or bird friendly coffee. Johnny's trying to awesome. attract Charlie's attention up here onto this perch um, because she's trained him to climb up onto this perch, which is really cute. But as you can see, he's very, very tired right now. So he's not convinced that he wants to do it. Oh yeah, here's a good look at his cute little mouth. Oh, Charlie. Um, I saw someone asking about cinnamon. He does like cinnamon. I can't tell you what his like favorite scent is. He seems to like most of them. They're just <laughs> random ones that he doesn't like. How much does he eat in a day? Well, he gets about a cup of like dry biscuits, which help give him all the nutrients that he would get from like chowing down on different leaves and bark out in the rainforest. So that makes it easier for us other than like having to go cut down a bunch of trees and stuff for him. Um, and then he gets all of this deliciousness. So we have sweet potato, we have carrot, we have corn, we have greens, all kinds of tasty things um, to help him eat every day. So that's about two cups of produce that are commissary, chops up every single day for Charlie, which is very kind of them. Amazing. Um, what do you think his favorite treat is though, Jake? It really varies. Right now, pine nuts he's into. Um, back in the day, he really loved peanuts and he loved banana chips. But these days, it really kind of seems like he, he's into the pine nuts, right, Johnny? Um, interesting. So he's a vegetarian. Well, yes and no. What's interesting with porcupines and really all the species is they primarily, primarily are eating like leaves and branches and twigs and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times the Central American porcupines and even the African porcupines will eat bones and even eat some meat off of carcasses that they can find. And that gets them more nutrients and it also helps that file their teeth down more, which is kind of cool. Um, interesting question that just came through from Nick. Um, are there differences, big differences between the males and females of this species? Um, typically, no. The females may be a little bit smaller. Charlie's just like a huge, huge porcupine. What's really funny is like the last couple of prehensile tailed porcupines I worked with before I worked with Charlie were like mm, three kilograms, four kilograms. And then it came here and he's massive. <laughs> um, so um, definitely you would see a difference between him and a typical female, yeah. Um, okay, thanks Jordan for pointing that out. Um, how can our guests see Charlie once we reopen? So Charlie's one of our ambassador animals. He lives behind the scenes and 90% of our ambassador animals can be seen in different kind of programming all around the zoo. So either our National Zoo Stars programs that happened with rentals um, at different events, our shows in the amphitheater, our random encounters on the path, what have you. And if you can't see them there, then you can see them in our wonderful outreach programming. And that's what Johnny does a lot of. So Charlie actually goes to a lot of different outreach programs. So he travels all around Middle Tennessee um, and talks to people there. Well, Johnny does the talking usually. <laughs> Charlie does the That would be a real, real talented porcupine, right? Yeah. Here's some ASMR, he's chewing. Of course he stopped. I'm trying to laugh quietly. is so cute um let's see do you know how charlie got his name i i don't know so um, I I've, come through. I've never asked to me it was like a good name for him so i was like that's good for me um yeah, but i've never name. yeah exactly oh gosh we're gonna see if we can get him to climb what do you think charlie Does he make noise, Jake, other than his wonderful chewing sounds? Yeah, so porcupines can like squeal or scream, um, and that is like indicative of them not being happy. 
So um, they can definitely do that if something bothers them. For Charlie, that's like, if, if we're outside with him hanging out and then it, we get a gust of wind or like if it rains suddenly, he'll like, Meh. and that's like, he's like, oh, we, we made him angry noise. Um, <laughs> he's like not a big fan of being outside, you know? He's like an indoor porcupine. He really prefers it to be like 75 degrees consistently and no, no moving air. Um, and then they also will- I can really. Yeah, they'll also do this thing that we call mooing, which is basically them making a noise, kind of like a cow mooing. And that's, that usually communicates like that they're not happy about something. So we never like to hear Charlie mooing because that means he's unhappy about something. And our job is to make sure he's happy all of the time. But again, usually the things that trigger him to moo, rain and wind. <laughs> Um, let's see, a couple questions about um, what do those quills feel like? Are they hard? Do they all feel the same? Yeah, so he has like, they're all pretty hard. It kind of feels like a comb. Um, so like if you were to like hit down on it, it wouldn't feel good. And his quills are all barbed at the end. Some of the larger species of terrestrial porcupines, like the African and Indian crested porcupines, their quills are not barbed, but their quills can grow up to a foot long. His largest quills are like maybe six inches long and they're all barbed so they can latch onto a predator's face really easily if he backs into them. So they're all really pretty tough. And then the little hairs that he has on the end of his tail here that aren't quills are kind of just wiry. Okay. Um, does he... Um... Does he play with anything? What's that like? Um, you know, Charlie really likes investigating scents. He likes to like find hidden food that we hide all over his enclosure. Um, one of the other things I really like to do for him is like smear a little bit of peanut butter everywhere, and that gets him foraging like he would naturally in the wild. Um, so I wouldn't say that he's like he doesn't like to like play with toys like humans or animals do, um, but he certainly likes to explore. Um, would it hurt him to lose a quill? No, it's just like shedding a hair, right, Jake? Exactly, yeah. So, um, if, if a predator bothered him and he like backed into it and then the barbed quill stuck in the face of a predator, it probably wouldn't feel good if like a big chunk of them were pulled out. Um, but by and large, like if he loses a quill here or there, it doesn't hurt. It's just like shedding hair, just like you said, Kelsey. Um, Lexi, Charlie doesn't have any offspring, but our exhibit porcupines do. Um, so I just want to answer that question for you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, will he jump off of the table? I mean, he's arboreal, so he might. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, does Anna Grace wants to know, um, what is Charlie's day-to-day -day routine? Does he have one? Charlie, okay, let me lay this out for you, okay? I usually get to the zoo at like 6.30 or 7 in the morning. Charlie's asleep. I go make sure Charlie's okay, make sure he like had a good night, etc. cetera. Um, that'll be around like 7.30. And then I check back in on him at like nine, he's sleeping. 10, sleeping, 11, sleeping, 12, sleeping, one, sleeping, all the way to like maybe six or 7 p.m. once it gets fully dark. And then Charlie comes alive and he runs all over and is exploring and finding all the food and smelling all the things. And then usually right around four in the morning, um, based on the cameras that I've put on him in the past, he goes right back to sleep. And then he settles in for when we get here at 6.30 or seven in the morning. So a lot of sleeping most of the day, nocturnal, and then he'll come awake at night and do his, his porcupine thing. Amazing. Um, Anna, you can here. let yeah. Helen know um, that Charlie probably would like um, something other than let, or other than grass for his snack. Jake, can you give us a shot of that yeah. bowl of treats you have again? Yeah, let me go find it. Charlie has migrated down the table. <laughs> okay, so here's all his like tasty stuff. His good vegetables, 
So good. Yeah, corn. What's that? A green, green bean? Oh my gosh. Charlie's eating better than I am these days. Good for you, Charlie. So the cool thing about mm -hmm. our, our animals here at the zoo is they all get restaurant quality produce and meat. And so he gets these like amazing like fresh vegetables and fruits. And our commissary chops them up to the exact proportions that he needs based on his health. Um, and so right now, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, he's having a little bit of a tooth issue. So his produce gets chopped up really tiny. Um, but when he's healthy and his teeth are working the way they should, it's in long kind of sticks that helps him break down all of those big old teeth. Um, scrolling back up, um, a question. Um, does Charlie have any porky friends that he hangs out with or is he a lone wolf? So I'm here today with Johnny, who's Charlie's main porky friend. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Um, so Johnny's kind of one of his he best friends. He does not have any actual porcupine friends, though. Correct. Charlie is a loner. Yeah. But he's Johnny, all good with that, right, Jake? He's very happy about that. Yeah, porcupines are fairly solitary. So it depends on the individual. But Charlie very much likes to be on his own. Um, let's see. I'm going back over here. Um, yeah, so the end of his quills have a barb, which isn't quite like a hook, but serves the same purpose of when it gets stuck in an animal, it is hard to pull out. So you're correct on that one. Um, let's see. Um... Are humans with animal allergies ever allergic to his species? That's an interesting question. Both allergic to porcupines. Um, for me, the it's the oils that porcupines secrete. Is that the same for you or are you dander? I think it's mostly the dander. Okay, he, Charlie and other parental toad porcupines have a lot of dander. And so that irritates Johnny's allergies. For me, it's North American porcupines more than anything. They make me break out in hives all over. It's not cute. Um, oh, wow. African crested porcupines I've never had a problem with. You neither? Yeah. So, yeah, just like a lot of other weird triggers, like our allergies can be affected by different things. I see someone, Kelsey, is asking, can you give him his bowl and let him eat, or do you have to hand feed him? Um, while Charlie would absolutely prefer being hand fed everything, um, he absolutely can eat from a bowl, but for our purposes today, it's a lot easier to hand feed him so that we can show him off. Well, it looks like he's like responding today. Cute. Ugh, so cute. Hi, Charlie. Do you want to try to climb again? Yeah. He's like looking more interested in what you have. Okay. I have to haul my carcass off of the ground again. Hi, Charlie. Yeah, you can see all these beautiful quills on his body. He's like, who moved? Okay, so we're gonna see if Johnny can get him up on this little perch. It's really cute to see him climbing. What do you think, Charlie? It looks pretty Um, He might incidentally eat bugs, but he doesn't seek out bugs to eat. He likes to eat vegetables, greens, and twigs. <laughs> Does he know that he's a good boy? I love that. I mean, we tell him all the time, yeah. Here's a he quill up know. close. He shed this quill. Look at that. This is the sharp end. Don't get stuck with it. Um, but it's on a microscopic level, Kelsey, which is really kind of cool. So they don't look. Yeah, that is cool. Look at them. What do you think, Charlie? Are you gonna climb for us? Is he full grown? Yeah, he's nine years old, so he's quite full grown. They're typically full grown at just about a year of age. How powerful is his nose, Jake? Quite powerful. So they rely mostly on scent to communicate. So he uses that giant nose to sniff out other porcupines, other predators, um, really anything that he needs to know, he finds out through his nose. What are some of the main predators for porcupines in the wild, Jake? So for the prehensile tailed porcupine down in South America, they're worried about things like ocelots and jaguars. Even a harpy eagle might try to take down a young prehensile tailed porcupine. Um, predators have evolved to be pretty darn smart, and so like something like an eagle would punch him out of a tree um, to dispatch him and then be able to consume him more carefully. Um, but a lot of mammals have a hard time 
actually hunting for these creatures because they're covered in these spines. They afford really good protection. And that black and white coloration that we're seeing is what's called aposomatic coloration, which is a big fancy word that basically means those colors are telling us something. So a lot of times in nature, when you see contrasting colors or really like bright colors next to really dark colors, that means that the animal has a way to defend itself. And for porcupines like Charlie, it's those quills. And like I mentioned a little earlier, the larger species of terrestrial porcupines don't have barbed quills. Theirs are just like very long and stabby, whereas Charlie's are short, stabby, and sticky. And so they stick at their prey or their predator. And those quills, they're not poisonous, right, Jake? I saw a question come through about that. No, yeah, no, not poisonous whatsoever. They're just like oily. So like, I just touched my arm after touching this quill. And so I'm confident that I'll break out in that, in that region of my arm now. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, wash your hands, everyone. Can he prick himself with his quills? Yes, Charlie is clumsy sometimes. So I've come in in the morning, he's had like, a quill stuck in part of his foot, um, but he made it just fine. Yeah, do they change colors? No, they don't change colors. Sometimes if he has more pee on his back, he'll be a little more yellow, but typically he's black and white. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> I'm gonna try to back up a little bit, Johnny, and see if that helps him do his little climbing behavior. So we have this perch that's built for him that Johnny and her coworkers can take out on outreach programming throughout Middle Tennessee and help show off how Charlie can climb. And so hopefully we're gonna see, oh, no. <laughs> he was like, that was, <laughs> that was enough. Okay, we're just gonna be patient. Can porcupines be defeated? If he can, what animals would defeat him? Yeah, so like I mentioned a little bit ago, eagles, jaguars, ocelots can all prey upon porcupines and they have to be cautious, but they can do it. The quills on his belly, oh, he's bending over again, so it's hard to see. The quills on his belly are a lot smaller. And so that's kind of the, the safest place for a predator to attack. Um, an interesting question that I hadn't thought about, just like the running question earlier, Jake, was can porcupines jump? Um, they can jump. Wait, look, he has food stuck in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> just saving that snack for later, Charlie, huh? Um, so they, they can jump a little bit, but typically they're such good climbers, they'll do that instead. Just climb all over. <laughs> Um, let's see, do, would, oh, sorry, does Charlie visit, um, the zoo camp kids during the summer? Oh, um, probably not. No, he's busy <laughs> doing outreach programming. I had to think. I know he's done different things with our education department in the past. He's come out for Celebrate Reading. He does all kinds of cool stuff. But yeah, he's a busy guy. His job is doing outreach programming. So he goes out on a lot of those. Awesome. Um, let's see. Um, a question came in from Lainey. How strong is Charlie's tail? Um, it's strong enough that it can support his six kilogram weight for a short period of time. So pretty darn strong, like an extra limb. Mm. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. All right. I think, Jake, if you want to go ahead, we probably can go ahead and wrap up. I know um, you've got to get out of there soon. So um, any final thoughts on Charlie you want to share? Um, yeah, I just think that Charlie's pretty great. He's real stinky. So it's nice to see him from a distance for sure. So you don't have to smell all of his pee. Um, do I have to move slowly? Um, yeah, we don't scare any of our animals. Like that's kind of a thing that we try not to do. So we always work with the animals and how they need us to be around them. Charlie prefers us to be nice and quiet for sure. And Aubrey, Charlie's best friend here at the zoo is Johnny, who's right next to me. Here, I'll show you Johnny. She's not a porcupine, but she, she she's a friend of Charlie's. How cute. All right, well, thanks Amazing. Kelsey so much. Yeah, thanks, Johnny. Charlie. Thanks, Johnny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll see y'all later. All right, bye, Jake. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, if you guys have any questions about Charlie, drop them in the comments on our feed later, and we'll get to them, okay? Thanks, guys.